artificial intelligence and ever more powerful GPUs will take graphics to a whole new level in the coming decade, both in interactive real-time content like video games, but also in video for platforms like YouTube, TikTok and Instagram. Today we will look at some of the incredible technologies that are emerging and what the future will look like for content creation and consumption. Today's video is sponsored by URCDKeys.com. If you buy a retail Windows 10 key, you will probably spend $100 or more. But if you buy an OEM key using a service like URCDKeys, it will cost you less than $15 after you use the coupon code C25. The keys work globally, and if you want Windows 11, what I recommend you do is just buy Windows 10 and get a free upgrade while you can. Personally, I use Windows 10 Pro. Once you've made your purchase using one of the many different payment options available, you will instantly find your key in your purchased orders on the URCDKeys website. Click Get Keys and copy the key. Then after you've installed Windows, of course, press Start and search for Activate and click on Activation Settings. Then click Change Product Key, pasting the key and click Next. That's it. Quick and easy and cheap and your Windows 10 is now activated. If you need Office 2021 professional, you can use the same 25% discount code C25 and get it for just $59.98. Since you're over there, check out the Black Friday sale for some great discounts on peripherals like lightweight gaming mice and controllers and some very affordable 60% mechanical keyboards. Thank you to URCD Keys for sponsoring today's video. Check the links in the video description to get your OEM Windows keys today. I've recently covered a bunch of ultra-realistic looking games being made, particularly with Unreal Engine 5, and one of the key technologies that will revolutionize graphics in the coming decade is actually already here, and that's Mashlets. Whereas up until now games have been constrained by memory or out of core, Mashlets allow for unlimited scenes to be streamed into VRAM. Nanite is the best example of Mashlets, but other engines like Octane have equivalent technologies. Nanite is an awesome streaming technology that allows you to load in assets into the game engine from disk. Obviously, a fast SSD is required for best results, but this means there won't be a VRAM or system RAM bottleneck going forward for large open world games. Mashlets, along with direct storage, will allow for assets that are gigabytes in size to be loaded in in real time. But this technology goes beyond complicated 3D objects. Note that this also applies to textures. So if you're a fan of running up close to a texture in video games to see how detailed it is, here's an example of a massive 128K by 128K texture being streamed in real time using mashlets. This can also be used for displacement maps. If there's one technology that will entice people to move to 8K monitors, this is it. One incredible piece of technology is a software called World Creator. As the name suggests, it lets designers create worlds for real time applications like games or for movies. What you want seeing is fully generated using World Creator. Game designers can quickly shape an idea with different types of textures, establishing biomes, creating water systems, etc. And these worlds can then be integrated or imported into game engines like Unreal Engine or Unity, and developers can build a game world off of that. In the next few years, games will feature absolutely incredible and realistic worlds thanks to tools like this. And because of the procedural nature of it, these tools will also free up development time that can be invested into areas that have been lacking, like storytelling, AI and innovative gameplay. Beyond Mashlets and tools like World Creator, which are already here, one emerging technology that will be incredibly disruptive and is in its infancy is Neural Rendering. Neural Rendering leverages artificial intelligence to create AI geometry that is a pure perceptron, so it's not actually modeled by an artist. You have to train the AI, of course, in artists will be able to feed it with either renders or photos, and the output is not a volume or a mesh, it's something totally different, it's an AI object. This can be a bit difficult to wrap your head around, but it's an asset that renders just like a 3D object would, but it's 100% an AI object. And these AI objects can coexist with current filters and effects, including hardware accelerated ray tracing. They are fundamentally a new asset type 
That means that future GPUs and CPUs could possibly have support for accelerated AI object generation and rendering. Maybe Nvidia will be pushing this in the next generation of GPUs, with the RTX 5000 series maybe having hardware-based AI object acceleration as a new selling point, who knows. One cool application of this from an artist's perspective would be a whole team of artists within a game studio could train the AI on a few modeled spaceships and then have the AI system create infinite variations of those spaceships as AI objects that can be used in-game. Alternatively, or in conjunction with this, artists will be able to add images of existing sci-fi spaceships from a variety of franchises and have the AI system generate AI objects of spaceships There are a mishmash of both modeled and already created spaceships. That's just an example, but one could see this in infinitely unique NPC models or weapon models or structures, etc. AI objects are going to truly revolutionize the way games are made. Moving on, a controversial and loaded term these days is the metaverse. Whether or not it comes to fruition as some of the companies invested in it are hoping, rendering it won't be easy, and having artists deploying dynamic assets into it won't be easy either. One of the key technologies that will enable this is distributed rendering, so basically harnessing the rendering power of GPUs from data centers and other sources and using them in a centralized way to do rendering that would be difficult to do locally. Looking at the commercial aspect of graphics, artists will also be looking at platforms like Solana and Metaplex to distribute and monetize dynamic NFTs, among other things. Basically, if you create a virtual world that is decentralized, you need an underlying structure for when a user buys virtual property or virtual art within that world. Some of these assets will be dynamic and change with user input, potentially being customizable on demand, and a distributed rendering network will make this possible. And guess who will benefit massively from this? Nvidia primarily, and AMD and Intel as well, as the need for GPU processing power will continue to increase. One of the coolest concepts in Star Trek was the holodeck, essentially a room on the Enterprise spaceship that the crew could go into and where reality was recreated perfectly. A company called Lightfield Lab has been working on making this a reality, no pun intended. Using holographic displays tiled together, you don't even need a headset to experience a virtual three-dimensional space. In this example, you can see a holographically rendered chameleon inside a real 3D space. So the aquarium is real, but the chameleon is not. It's rendered to match your viewpoint. It's tracking your position and rendering it in a holographic display. The display has 40 gigapixels, so to drive this at this resolution you need about a thousand times more compute than 4K requires. So for local rendering you'd need 16 times the GPU power that a 4K display would need. That means that perhaps mid-decade or towards 2027 we might have displays with enough built-in rendering power for us to have our own holodecks at home. One upcoming evolution in technology and graphics that will affect me personally, directly and indirectly as a creator, and you as a viewer, is an evolution in video. As you might have noticed recently, YouTube has added a feature where you can tell which parts of a video have been watched the most. The thinking behind this is as people's attention spans are getting shorter and shorter, platforms are looking at ways to facilitate users getting to the bit of information they want the fastest. At companies like Adobe, research is being done to build tools that will convert longer videos into smaller snippets with just the relevant information to the viewer. Think of it as shorts that highlight bits of podcasts, but instead of these being done by the creators manually using AI tools, in the future these shorts or snippets will be done automatically. YouTube will likely have a feature that will allow creators to automatically generate shorts based on longer videos, with AI processing the contextual information and inferring from viewer behavior what parts of the video should be featured in the shorts. This sort of AI processing will require powerful accelerators, with GPUs being at the forefront of this revolution in video. Beyond this is video generation without needing video editing software. To produce videos, I currently use Adobe Premiere. I have to write a rough script, record the audio, then source footage and create graphs and charts in Photoshop and put all of that together into the final video. In the future, it's possible that the only step required here will be the script. From the script, AI will be able to generate a video 
assuming you can train an AI on videos you've created previously or on videos whose style you want to mimic. This is a potential can of worms when it comes to copyright, but that's beyond the topic of this video. Another thing I could see happen is this merging of 3D graphics from game engines and video on platforms like YouTube, TikTok and Instagram. Currently, videos are very basic when it comes to interactivity and immersion, leveraging AI. In the future, if you are watching your favorite creator doing a tour of their gaming setup, for instance, an AI layer could be running on top of the video to automatically identify every piece of gear that that creator uses. Like what mouse do they use? What's that painting they have on the wall? What's the PC case they have, etc. Without the creator having to manually name each thing, AI will be analyzing and layering information on top of the video. Another big trend I see happening in the next few years will be combining generative transformers with nerfs. The basic idea is that you can turn a text description into a three-dimensional object which can then be combined into full-scale dynamic scenes. Creating a dynamic 3D narrative for video content will merge video games and video in a very interesting way. For example, a creator could use Unreal Engine to create a 3D environment that video consumers could rotate and interact with, and the whole narrative coming from the creator could be enjoyed from different angles and with different filters. Instead of the director cut for movies, you could have curated cuts that you could choose from. The movie Die Hard could be reissued with every scene being generated from completely different angles. You could replace actors in your favorite movies, or have them being shot in the style of a particular director you like. This will also apply to video games, with Nvidia's recently announced RTX Remix being a step in this direction, where games can be modded to fit an entirely new style, leveraging artificial intelligence. The convergence of AI and 3D graphics, along with generated content, will probably represent the most disruptive advancements in media creation and consumption in the coming decade, and the hardware demands to do all this in real time will continue increasing. While games storytelling, AI and gameplay arguably have been stagnating in recent years, innovation in graphics continues, and as tools become easier to use and free up development time from game devs, there's hope that a new renaissance age in gaming and video will be materializing in the coming decade. Nvidia, AMD and Intel certainly won't have a shortage of demand for their hardware in the next 10 years. Speaking of which, CES is just around the corner and I will be analyzing the hardware announcements and launches coming out of it. Be sure to subscribe so you don't miss that. This video was made possible by my awesome patrons. By supporting my channel on Patreon, you will gain access to the Cortex Discord server, where you can talk to me directly and join a welcoming community of tech enthusiasts. If you can't contribute at this time, then give this video a like and share it, as that really helps. Thanks for watching, and until the next one.